Our next guest is a top-rated sinus surgeon and one of the leading voice doctors in America. And three weeks ago, he saved my life. Please welcome Dr. Sean Nasiri. Thank you so much. Nasiri! Welcome! We are so grateful for you taking care of, of our genie. Can you walk us through what happened? Sure, it was my honor. So what happened to Jeannie was that rare one in a thousand sore throats that really breaks out of the tonsil into the tissue around it. We call it an abscess because it's like a pimple that just gets out of the area that it is and needs to be released. And for her, she had closed by the time she saw me two thirds of her windpipe. She'd wow. had a sore throat for several days. It just kept getting worse. And as she was getting treated, the treatment was just not keeping up with the infection. So the infection literally broke out of her throat into the windpipe, into the area around her neck. By the time she walked into my office Sunday morning, her throat was two thirds closed in terms of her windpipe and her breathing. Wow, oh, well, wow. thank wow. God she came to you. I have to ask you, doctor, right. what are the warning signs of something like this and how can we prevent this from happening to other people? So basically what happens is you get a really bad sore throat and it just doesn't get better. After several days, it's harder to swallow. You make a whistling noise. It's hard to open your jaw. And then when anyone looks in your throat, either with a phone, a flashlight, anything, you see that one side of the throat is closed and one side is open. That's definitely a warning sign that there's an abscess down there. And I want to also say that most people will think that swelling is just a sore throat. Two lessons I learned. Number one, ear, nose, and throat, go to that specific doctor. I was misdiagnosed by two doctors, which led me to this growing abscess. And number two, don't just take steroid shots to numb things. Steroid shots trick you in thinking you're okay when actually you could be getting worse. Well, Jeannie, you went to the best of the best ear, nose, and throat doctor, and I know this personally because you are my doctor and you are also Israel's doctor as well. So we love you, you've saved our lives, and we're just so grateful to you. Jeannie actually had to have emergency life-saving surgery on her throat. So what is the recovery process for something like that? So basically what happened is her throat was closing up, we opened it, we took out the infection because otherwise she was in danger from blood poisoning, from closing her windpipe, and also wow. that infection breaking open and causing a laryngospasm like Joan Rivers passed. So once she had the surgery and we did it, it took about an hour and a half. She was in the hospital for five days and it was a miserable first few days because it was like a tonsillectomy times 20. But to wow. her credit, she's amazing and such a trooper and in such great physical condition that within a few hours, she was actually talking again, which is excruciatingly painful the first week or 10 days. And she's made one of the quickest recoveries I've seen in the last 25 years. And that's thanks Wow, well, like you just said, getting. speaking is like almost unbearable. It's extremely painful after the surgery. What about eating? It's, it hurts, it hurts when you talk, when you swallow, when you breathe, and then anytime wow. you use your throat to eat, it just burns. So during this time, we had her on cool, bland, soft, squishy diet. We generally call it the mom mm -hmm. diet, because moms always know, <laughs> when you have strep throat, don't be eating potato chips and no. hard food, because it burns. Jeannie, you enjoyed that, didn't you? No, I hated it. It was disgusting. Cold soup everywhere, and I'm sick of bone broth. It's just, it's too much, but I'm thankful to be alive. And doctor, you've <laughs> taken your medical expertise to a whole new level with your Yuka wellness system. You've got to tell us about it. I have it here. Oh, thank you. Well, we're really excited. So my wife and I, my wife is a pediatric heart anesthesiologist, Dr. Bidenseri, and together with the two of us, we have 45 years of medical experience. And what our experience has been, and we're also parents of three, three kids who are always getting sick when other kids get the flu at school. And now with COVID, everyone's very worried about everything. So for the last two years, we've been working on this synergistic system to help everyone with their respiratory health. What that means is everyone now realizes, and we've been saying this for 20 years, and you know from doing tours, everyone gets on the road and they get sick. We get on a plane, right. we travel, yeah. we're in tight quarters with everyone else. And once we're no longer two yeah. or three years old, we get sick through our respiratory system, our nose and throat. Uh. That's 90% of how all of us get sick. So we want to do things that would enhance how your respiratory res system responds, but also make it like a fun process. Because everyone hates a daily ritual of brushing my teeth, taking my vitamins, and we formulate things in a way that would be a lot more fun. 
because this is a really stressful, horribly ang anxiety-laden time for our children, for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So we wanted to make that whole process better because we put a system together and put it so that you could have fun protecting yourself from the outside in and improving and boosting your immune system from the inside out. I'll post the details to this on my gram so you guys can find it because it's really easy to use and it's fun for kids too. It would have helped me. Dr. Nasiri, awesome. thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for explaining it and for saving Jeannie's life. For more information on Dr. Nasiri and his practice, go to thereal.com.